Welcome to week six of Bible Studies for Life. I hope you had a great Easter. I hope it was a wonderful time with your family, with friends, and in the Lord and in church. I hope that was really a good, a good time for you. We're looking forward to this passage as we kind of come at the end here of the Gospel of Luke and this last um, last passage, really, for, for Luke about the resurrection and then to the ascension. So we're going to be in Luke 24, the end of it. Go ahead and read the whole chapter. Be familiar with it. That's always helpful here as we uh, look at that. Before we do, if you haven't already, subscribe. Hit the little subscribe button. It's very easy. Hit the like button. That's very easy. You can do that. Um, then share it with somebody else. Appreciate it if you do that. Put in a comment or a question. Tell us where you're watching from. And if you want to support what we're doing, you can go to give.exposedtochrist.com to support the ministry that we have in teaching and in mission. Let's look at Luke 24. All right, we're picking up here where Jesus has already met with the two men from Emmaus. They have gone into the upper room. They've talked with the disciples, told them what they heard. Jesus has appeared into the upper room and has already talked with them. So we're picking up in the middle of this conversation Jesus is having with his disciples after his resurrection. It says, he told them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Okay, Jesus basically says, these are my words that I spoke to you. This is, I've told you, <laughs> I've already told you about this. And we know that in the gospels, right, there's this statement of he would talk to them about what was about to happen. He would tell them what was going to happen. And here he's saying, Look, I've already told you, you should, I wish you would have listened. I wish you would have understood. I wish you could have figured it out, but I'm telling you again. Um, you ever had that where you just feel like you have to say something over and over? Well, that was Jesus. That's God with us all the time, right? He says it over and over and over again, right? He says, I told you that everything is in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms, and it will be fulfilled. And then what does he do? He opens their minds to understand the scriptures. He takes them back. This is the exact thing he did with the two men from Emmaus, although they didn't know it was Jesus. He's doing it with them again, and he's opening up the scripture. And you've got to believe that as they saw those, now looking back, they went, oh, man, oh, Isaiah 53. Oh, yeah, that's it. I get it. You know, all of these things, he shows them all the ways that his life fulfilled scripture. Now, people have done these studies, sometimes it's helpful. Josh McDowell, that's who I grew up with, right? And 300 something prophecies, every single one of them fulfilled. There is no Old Testament prophecy about the Messiah that wasn't fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. He fulfilled every single one of them. That The odds of that are beyond astronomical. There's, there's just no way that he could have coincidentally, so many of these things were outside of his control and yet were completely fulfilled in his life. Okay. He also said to them, this is what is written. Let me just say this one last thing about these things that are written, you know. This was, this was the confirmation to them, and still is confirmation today of who Jesus is. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead the third day, and repentance for forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and look, I am sending you what my Father promised. As for you, stay in the city until you are empowered from on high. Okay, he says, look, all this was there. The Messiah will suffer. He will rise. Repentance for forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed to all nations, all nations, starting in Jerusalem, starting here. And then I love this because he says, you saw this. You're the witnesses. You saw all of this. All of these things I told you. And, and he's just walking them back through this long story that's been going on since Genesis. It's been going on. He showed them Genesis 3 and the, the um, first prophecy about the coming Messiah. All of these things, right? All, and you, he says, look, what a privilege. What a privilege. You got to see all of this. We look back, right, and we see it. But they lived in the middle of it. They were right in the middle of this prophecy being fulfilled. He says, you, you, you're witnesses. You saw it all. And he says, look, now I'm sending you what my father promised, okay? This is talking about the Holy Spirit. It's coming. And so for you, you stay in the city until you are empowered from on high. Okay, I'm going to come back to that in just a minute because... I, want, I wanted to say this. This is to all the nations. Jesus 
mission has been to all people, always. God's mission has been for all people, always. And and so it's not just for you. It's not, uh, you know, um, my four no more kind of thing. It is for everyone. We need to remember that it's for all nations. This is all people groups. And then he says, you stay until you are empowered from on high. Obviously, they needed to stay there till the Holy Spirit comes. We know that. We look back. They were like, okay, well, I don't know what that means, right? Because that had never happened before. They were experiencing things that had never happened for anyone ever in all of history before. See, we ought to appreciate how, what a challenge that is, right? But they're, they're trying to understand these things in the middle of it. We look back and we see that. You wait for the power to come from on high. We know that's in the day of, of uh, Pentecost, right? Acts chapter 1. We know what that is, Acts chapter 2. We see that happening in their lives, but they didn't know. Right? They didn't know how long they were going to be waiting. They didn't know what was going to happen when it happened. What does it mean when you're empowered from on high? What does that mean? They didn't know. But we look back and we see that, right? When the Holy Spirit comes in power on their lives and they become the witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. This is still true today. Okay, listen, we all, every person who puts their faith in Jesus Christ receives the Holy Spirit into their life at the moment of faith. You don't get baptized and then receive the Holy Spirit. You receive the Holy Spirit when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, when you repent of your sins and you turn to him, the Holy Spirit comes and enters your life as a guarantee, as a deposit for eternity. So we have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. They did not yet have that at that point, okay? But they would. But there are still times in our own lives and in the lives of the, of the disciples, I would say, the early followers, the same was true. There were times when the Spirit had full freedom to work in the life of an individual believer. This is Paul writing, you know, uh, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. He's writing to the churches who were believers who already were filled with the Spirit, but what he was talking about was a filling of the Spirit, um, not just from his side, but from our side in the sense that we allow the fullness of the Holy Spirit to move fully within our lives. And at that moment, we have been empowered by him from on high. We still need to understand that we require the power of the Holy Spirit fully active in our lives to fully obey and see him fully glorified through us. We don't wait for him to empower us. He already has. What we do is we fully rely on the power in us because we need him to work through us. That if he does not work through us, then it doesn't really matter what we do. <laughs> We need his power still. Okay, last part. And then he led them out to the vicinity of Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was carried up into heaven. After worshiping him, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple praising God. Okay, Luke ends his gospel and then picks up his letter, his, his historical account. We call it Acts the acts of the Holy Spirit, or the acts of the apostles, <laughs> but he picks it up here, right, at the ascension. So he, he's kind of short in what he says here. He's much longer in Acts chapter 1, describing that scene there uh, on the hilltop. But what we see here is they go out to Bethany, and he lifts up his hands, and he blessed them. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will receive power, and you will be my witnesses. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that's his blessing. And then, while he was blessing them, he left them and was carried up into heaven. In the midst of that, the, I don't know what it is, right? He's carried up into heaven. He, he ascended to the right hand of the Father, right in front of him. And after that, they worshiped him, and they went back to Jerusalem with great joy. All right? And they're in the temple, praising God. They're, they're, <laughs> they are amazed, right? Clearly. But their response is worship. 
and the joy they have. It's kind of odd, right? You know, what I've always believed is that in the midst of this 40 days that Jesus is on earth after the resurrection, these 40 days that he's walking with his disciples, I think many of them probably thought this is what it's going to be. He's just, this is it. He's going to be with us forever. And, and maybe there was for some a little bit of shock when he left and maybe a little bit of sadness, but sadness replaced by the joy of what you saw, the exhilaration that happens when we, when we see God working right in front of us. I mean, right, the clear hand of God working. And so they knew now we must be prepared. We must get ourselves ready, spiritually ready for what God is going to do. And just as a point of discipleship here, you can't do anything worth doing without the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You've got to fully surrender to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Don't do it on your own. Don't try it on your own. Rely on the Spirit. And then just enjoy. When you see God move, enjoy it. It's exhilarating when you see God move. Enjoy those times. Thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe, like, comment, share it with somebody else. All right. We'll see you next time.